This study, which is published in Journal of American Medical Association on November 2020, is a secondary analysis of the Vital Randomized Clinical Trial, uh, which is assessing the effects of vitamin D3 supplementation on development of advanced cancer showed promising effects of vitamin D3 in preventing the cancer. But what about the design setting and participant? Vital is a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled a clinical trial of vitamin D3, which is cholecalciferol, 2,000 international unit per day, and marine omega-3 fatty acids, 1 gram per day, which has been done on more than 25,000 participants, men over 50 years old and women more than 55 years old, uh, who were free of cancer and cardiovascular disease at baseline. So here's the key points in this study. The question is that does vitamin D3 supplementation reduce the risk of developing advanced or metastatic or fatal cancer among adults without a diagnosis of cancer at baseline? In this secondary analysis of randomized clinical trial with 25,871 patients, supp supplementation with vitamin D3 reduced incidence of advanced or metastatic or fatal cancer in the overall cohort with the strongest risk reduction in individuals with normal weight and no reduction amount individuals with overweight or obesity. In other words, these findings suggest that vitamin D3 may reduce the risk of developing advanced cancer among adults without a diagnosis of cancer at baseline. And this protective effect is apparent for those who have normal but not elevated body mass index. Here is what Dr. Michael Greger has to say about vitamin D3 supplementation and life expectancy. If everyone took 2,000 units of vitamin D a day, it could shift the curve from average blood levels in the mid-50s to about 110, which some estimate could add years to our life expectancy. Data derived from randomized clinical trials have convinced some influential experts, such as Harvard's Chair of Nutrition, that we should shoot for this kind of range, levels that about 9 out of 10 people fail to reach, because it may necessitate taking between 1,800 and 4,000 units a day. The Institute of Medicine, however, considered blood levels of 50 to be sufficient, and therefore only recommended 6 to 800 units a day for those with little or no sun exposure, because they were only considering bone health. But even if you just cared about your bones and not your lifespan, you'd still probably want to shoot for the 75 threshold, because there's evidence like this from hundreds of autopsies of people that like died in car accidents showing osteomalacia, softening of the bones. And between 18 and 39 percent of people that reach the Institute of Medicine target but fail to make it to 75. There's even been a charge that the Institute of Medicine simply just made a mistake in their calculations. And so using their own criteria, uh, they should be recommending thousands of units a day as well. Uh, but the mere absence of soft bones can hardly be considered an adequate definition either of health or of vitamin D sufficiency. It's like saying you only need 10 milligrams of vitamin C to avoid scurvy. Uh, yeah, but we need way more than that for optimal health. The Institute of Medicine took the position that the burden of proof fell on anyone who claimed benefits for intake higher than their minimal recommendations, which is a good approach for drugs. For unnatural substances, less is more until proven otherwise. But for nutrients, shouldn't the starting point, at least, be the natural levels to which our bodies have become finely tuned over millions of years? Uh, the target level of 75 only sounds high compared to average levels today. But in modern times, we practice unnatural activities like uh, working at a desk job, or sometimes even wearing clothes. We evolved running around naked in equatorial Africa, getting sun all day long. If you measure vitamin D levels in those living traditional lives in the cradle of humanity, a normal vitamin D level would be over 100. So maybe that should be the starting point until proven otherwise. 
a concept regrettably many guidelines committees seems to have ignored. Now look, the natural level isn't necessarily the optimal level. Maybe the body would have thrived with less. So you still have to look at what levels correspond to the lowest disease rates. And when you do, the highest levels do indeed seem to correlate with less disease. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video and find it beneficial, please share it in your social media and uh, to your friend and families. And uh, like always, stay happy and healthy. Thanks and have a great day.